morning, Dominion City Saints. Good morning, people of God, brothers and sisters. Let us go before his throng in prayer on this morning. The word of God reads in Hebrew, throughout him then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is, that is the fruit of our lips that acknowledge his name. Let us exalt his name on this morning. God, we thank you on this morning for being our God. Lord, we thank you for being the Lord our shepherd. Lord, we thank you, God, because you are our shepherd. We shall not want, God. Oh, God, we thank you for your love, God. We thank you for your power. We thank you for grace on this morning, God. Lord, you are Elohim, God. Oh, God, you are Lord the Lord. Lord, we thank you right now, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for being Jehovah Siskinu, God. Oh, God, you are worthy of all the glory this morning, God. Lord, we thank you that we can come into your temple, God, and worship you, God, and exalt your holy name. Let us exalt the King of kings, the Lord strong and mighty. Oh, God, we thank you for being strong. We thank you for being mighty in battle, God. Oh, God, you are a wonderful counselor, God. Oh, God, you are the King of kings, and Lord, you are Lord of lords, God. Oh, God, we thank you this morning, God, with our hands lifted, God. Oh, God, we offer up praises to you, God. Oh, God, there is no one like you, God. There is no one like the God we serve. Lord, you are pure. We thank you for being sovereign, God. Oh, God, we thank you. No love can compare to your love, God. Oh, we thank you for your perfect love, God. For it's your perfect love that casts out fear, God. Oh, we worship you, God. We exalt your name, Jesus. We thank you on today, God. And Lord, we just welcome you into this house on this morning, God. Lord, we give lip up songs to you, God. And Lord, we thank you for the word on today, God. We pray right now, God, that you will cover our hearts, God. Cover the hearts of your people right now, God. Lord, we ask right now, God, that you remove the stony heart, God. And Lord, you will give us a heart of flesh, God. Lord, give us a heart to receive your word, God. Give us a heart right now, God, that bring forth transformation, God. And a renewing in our minds, God. Oh, Lord, we worship you, God. And Lord, we give you glory this morning, God. Oh, God, we thank you right now, God. Help my mama, baba, send it, baby, baby, cut the little baka. Oh, my mama, baba, send it, baby, baby, cut the little baka. Oh, God, we thank you this morning, God. We thank you for the leaders of this house, God. The set force of this place, God. And we thank you for Apostle Jonathan Brown, God. We thank you for Prophet Ashley Brown, God. And we ask right now, God, that you will continue to lead them, God. Continue right now, God, to guide them, God. And God, we thank you for the word of today, God. Lord, let your word bring about deliverance, God. And Lord, we ask that heaven will open up, God. And heaven will back up our man of God on this morning, God. Oh, we thank you right now, God. We bless you for the souls that will be saved on today, God. We thank you for the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Lord, the word tells us that you came to save those who are lost. So, God, we thank you on today, God. And we magnify your holy name. Oh, we exalt you, Jesus. There's no one like our Father. Oh, we tell you, Lord, we love you, God. Lord, we thank you for grace. We thank you for your mercy. You are the Redeemer, God. The word said, let the Redeemer, the Lord, say so. So, God, we thank you right now, God. Oh, hell, my mama, shed it, Baba. Oh, God, we worship you. And we give you glory and honor. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Come on, can we lift up a great big shout of praise? Come on, anybody come in this house to seek after Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just take a few minutes to just jump and say hallelujah. Come on, get yourself pumped up for the praise and worship. Come on, get yourself pumped up to give God. Jesus. 
Jesus. Here we go. I'm a God chaser. God chaser. Because I love you, I'll chase you forever. I'm a God chaser. God chaser. Because I love you, I'll chase you forever. Come on, can you say I'm a God chaser? I'm a God chaser. Come on. God chaser. Because I love you. Because I love you, I'll chase you.
chasing after you I'm praying my way through Yes I am Just to be closer to you Jesus Yes I am I'm chasing after you Come on can y'all help me sing I'm chasing after you
When do we proclaim your great name? Your great name. We love, we love to Come on, say, call your name. Call your name. It's something. It's something. We just can't explain. That happens. That happens. When we proclaim the name of Jesus. Come on, take it up. Father, which 
Blessings to you. I come, I'm Blondine Brown, and I come to you this morning to bring you the scripture for today. Our scripture is coming from James chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. And it reads, James, a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that it's the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways thank you jesus now may the lord bless the hearers the readers and the doers of his most holy holy word amen good morning good morning this moment, we want to want to take the time out to welcome all our first-time visitors. If you would just raise your hand, wave for us, all our first-time visitors. Come on, DCC, let's welcome. Good morning, everybody. On behalf of Apostle Brown and Prophet Brown, we want to say welcome. We also want to welcome our online visitors, so let's welcome them. On behalf of Apostle Brown and Prophet Brown, we want to say welcome. And also to Apostle and to Prophets, I want to say I honor you both. Five months me and my family have been here and it has been life changing. It saved my, my marriage has been saved again. Three years I was lost, Mom. Three years I was lost. Didn't know what to do, leading wrong, doing everything wrong. And that prophecy, that prophecy you hit was nailed on the head. Nailed on the head. I honor you both and I thank you. Good morning, Dominion City Church and our guests. Hey. Welcome, you all looking really nice this morning. I'm Sister Rhonda Wright, and I'm going to bring you the announcements on this morning. Uh, raise your hand or let out a scream if you're excited to get the announcements on this morning. I'm honored to do the announcements because they help us stay connected and aware with what's going on with Dominion City Church. So uh, we're never left in the dark. We're never behind. Uh, the first announcement I would like to bring is for last night, Daughter's Day, the Women's Hangout the Christmas Edition. Um, 
I know you all had a good time, and our prophetess always brings a word, even though it's a lot of fun, uh, just to keep renewing the minds of the daughters and teaching them and keep us in fellowship and unified together. All right? Uh, for those of you who signed up for the discipleship class, it will be this Thursday at 6 p.m. <laughs> life changing so you don't want to miss this Thursday. I have another important announcement for corporate prayer. The last corporate prayer of this year, 2023, will be tomorrow, Monday night at 6.30 p.m. I know corporate prayer is very necessary to help us with everything we're going through to help us uh, pray together to tear down principalities and uh, help us pray what's on the heart of our leaders and also what's on the heart of God for this region and for this area and uh, for our families. All right, new membership class for all new members is happening this month. If you are a new member and have not joined a class yet, please register in the foyer at the welcome desk in the lobby after service. Grief Night Holiday Edition, Paint and Talk with Miss Arletha Orr. It will be Wednesday, December 20th at 6 p.m. The location will be announced soon. If you would like to attend, please also register at the welcome desk. I also have another announcement. Can all the couples in the house make some noise? social for all couples this Saturday, December 16th. The location will be announced itself. If you desire to be a part of the couples night, also sign up at the welcome desk. Right out the service. And lastly, I just have some gentle reminders to help keep the house decently in order. And we know we do that so service can flow as well as it flows and um, smoothly. Please respect the lovely greeters, all of their instructions. Uh, refrain from eating, drinking, and chewing gum in the sanctuary. And also, can we give it up for the media team for helping this morning? And for Brother Walton helping with the flow of announcements. Certainly not least, I would like to honor our spiritual leaders, um, Apostle Jonathan Brown and Prophetess Ashley Brown. Uh, just want to honor you all. We know that honor is very biblical. Uh, it's nothing made up. It's all throughout scripture. And uh, we know that they work very hard. Uh, no matter with all the new additions that come and all the new levels that they have to uh, mount up to, and they still have the capacity and the grace from God to do it. And um, they love doing ministry. We can tell they never get tired, and they constantly, constantly, constantly pour into us in many, many, many ways. So we just love you all, and we just honor you for just saying yes each and every day. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good and all the time. Oh, taste and see. And today is no exception. Get those people in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you excited for a miracle on today? Anybody need a miracle today? Amen. Glory to God. If you need 
a miracle, you're in the right place to receive that miracle. God is still doing what God does, and God does not come off his throne. Amen. It's giving time in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's giving time, and giving time is an opportunity for us to show our maturity as it relates to money. There are over 2,000 scriptures in the Bible about money, how to manage your money how we should give our money, how we steward our money. There are over 2,000 scriptures in the word of God about money. And so it's very vitally important that we begin to steward our money, give our money, and honor God through the principle of giving. There is a scripture that I want to show you. And this scripture comes from Proverbs. It's Proverbs 3, amen, starting at verse number 9. Now, before we get to verse number 9, earlier in that passage or in that chapter, we see the Lord God begin to tell us, or we see Solomon begin to tell us how we should live our life. And one of the things he said is, trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge God and he shall direct your what? Your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. A lot of times when we began to talk about wealth, when we began to talk about money, when we began to talk about our possessions, this is one of the areas that we don't trust the Lord in with all our heart. If money gets tight or money gets low, the enemy tells us that it's your responsibility to figure it out. We rarely ever go to God and fast and pray when our finances are in trouble. We rarely ever say, I'm going to go on a seven-day fast before I go and borrow the money or before I go and take out another loan or before I give up and believe that God is not with me. And so as God began to speak to me, years ago when there was a struggle for me to tithe. I only tithe by default. I only tithe because I was married to a tither. And he would take our finances and he would take out my portion from my check and he would tithe for me because I didn't have the revelation of tithing. I was one of those people who would come into the house of God and I would give God the same five, ten, or twenty dollars every week. I wasn't going to think about it. I didn't even have to plan it. I had made up in my mind that this is what I was going to give God and there was nothing more for me to give and no matter who got up and told about offering no matter who got up and talked about robbing God, no matter who gave me scripture after scripture, I had indoctrinated myself into listen, poverty I had indoctrinated myself into greed I had indoctrinated myself that because I didn't have what everybody else had I had to hold on to what I had And so it didn't matter what they asked for. It didn't matter what the scripture said. I had already had a concrete ideal of what I was going to give into the house of God. And then I started to study the scriptures. And outside of Malachi where it talks about robbing God, outside of the, the tithing scriptures, there is a scripture in Proverbs that said, Honor the Lord with your possessions. Honor the Lord with your wealth. Honor the Lord with the things that you have. Honor the Lord with your riches. And I thought about what it meant to honor God. And sometimes it's hard to think about honoring God if you don't think about how God has honored you. If you don't take a moment to be thankful, if you don't take a moment to be grateful, if you don't take a moment to just look back over your life at all the times that your lights could have been cut out. And all the times he reconnected your your lights and your gas. If you just take a moment to think about all the times that you showed up late to work in some kind of way you have kept your job or you were always able to find another job. If you just think about, I know we think about what we don't have, but if you take a moment to think about where you could be, if you've ever slept in a car before, if you've ever had to borrow food, if you ever had to pretend like you weren't hungry when you were at work because ends weren't just meeting and then you found out that God had not forgotten about you but he decided that he was going to make a way and you're on the other side of a way that the Lord made you're on the other side of a way that the Lord has made on your behalf 
And so when you think about the goodness of God, when you think about the gratefulness of God, you will start to honor God even if you only have a little. I've learned that my giving was always a problem when I didn't know how to be grateful. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, those who love money will never have enough. And so the enemy will keep us so locked in into what we don't have that we will forget about all the ways that God has made. One of the things that will break off of you when you start to give, one of the spirits that will break is the spirit of shame. Many of us are embarrassed at some of the interest rates we have. We are embarrassed of some of the decisions that we made with our money. It, offering time is embarrassing. It's embarrassing because there's people in this room that say, I want to be able to give hundreds and thousands, but I just don't have it right now, so I feel less than I want to be able to sow more into the kingdom. But I know a God that will take your little, and he will allow your little to continue to produce. When you sow a seed that seed will speak for you for years to come that seed will speak for your children that seed will speak for your grandchildren that seed will continue to talk for you it will continue to cry out for you and that seed will make sure that your needs are always supplied when you give into the kingdom of God you're making a spiritual investment. When you make natural investors, if anybody's ever invested money, basically what you do is you say, I'm going to put the money up front. I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to take a risk that if I put my money into this business endeavor, and basically what people will tell you, if you help us get started, when we make the money back, then we're going to pay you back that plus interest. Hello. When we do this in the kingdom, every time you give, sow, tithe, whatever it is, every single time, you are putting in an investment into the kingdom of God that will always speak for you. It will always come back. It will always come back when you're in the interview. Y'all didn't come to have church today. I'm telling you what I know. When you're in an interview, it will come and speak for you. When you don't qualify, some of us are saying, I've been applying for a job. Put a seed on it. And I guarantee you that seed will talk. That seed will prophesy. That seed will make sure that although you don't have the qualifications and you don't have the degree and you don't have the experience, that seed will speak for you in an interview. You will get opportunities uh, that you didn't know that you could have because you don't have the expertise. I may I not have the expertise but I have a seed and so this has been the trajectory of my life after my husband was so you know tithe and I finally got the revelation of tithing I started to tithe on my own he no longer had to go in and pull my tithes for me and guess what I was saved and I did not tithe and then as I began to become a student of the scriptures, I started learning about giving to the poor. I started learning about giving away my possessions, the things that were valuable. I stopped just giving away things that I no longer wanted, but God would challenge me to give away wigs and purses and shoes. And I'm talking about expensive stuff. So that money and possessions would never be an idol. It would never be something I bow down and worship. And one of the ways I knew that I worship money is because I could not give it to God when he said give it to him. If you want to know what you worship, just figure out the thing that you're unwilling to give to God when he says give it to him. And then not only that, I would see God return and give. I was just telling my husband, another spiritual daughter, how God made me give all of my clothes away. And I testified about this the beginning of this year. Right after I had Savannah, he made me give all my clothes away to a prison ministry. And I, I, was, I was upset because it was things that still had the tags on them. I was upset because I got a nice wardrobe. And I had just really built that part of my wardrobe back up. And he said, give it all away. I was taking bags and bags of clothes and giving them to people and don't even know if they're going to appreciate I was getting them out the closet. I hope they do right by these dresses. I done preached in these dresses. 
I was getting it out the closet and God was constantly saying, this is how you tear down your idols. This is how you constantly stay before me. And that happened at the beginning of the year. And I was telling the apostle, I was telling the daughters that last night I was, I was getting another bag together for somebody else. And I was saying, man, my wardrobe is, my closet is, I don't know how it's filled. But my closet is already filled after giving away every single thing that I had in that closet. When you start to give into the kingdom of God, when you sow, when you give to the poor, when you help people that cannot help themselves, when you decide that the kingdom needs to go forth, you will find that money will chase you down. Possessions will chase you down. You will not have to run after it. I'm telling you what I know. But not only that, if you sow and you steward, if you do not steward your finances, it will eat up a harvest that your seed produced, but you don't know that your seed produced it because you didn't steward the 90%. So some of us hear teachings like this and you're like, well, I sow out of time. But the 90%, where are you sowing that? What are you doing with the 90%? So some of us are checking out because you've been in church five years and you've heard it. You've seen everybody else testify. But it's your own fault that your lip is turned up because you don't steward your 90%. And so when we hear this, just because you're not stewarding your 90% doesn't mean you're no longer qualified. Doesn't mean you're no longer obligated to steal soul. The principle still works. The principle still what? Works. This is one of my favorite testimonies. It's an individual that sold a $30,000 seed when we were at the end of the building project. So the thousand, a $30,000 seed got it transferred into the church account so we could finish the building. And when people sow that kind of money, because people do sow that kind of money, my pastor and I sold thousands of dollars. I always said that as a leader of this church, I will always be one of the biggest givers. It will never be said that anybody can say they're giving more than the leaders, because we're going to give. And so this person sold that $30,000 seed, and it was not, I, I kid you not, two months later, somebody ended up giving this person a million dollars worth of property. One million dollars. This principle of sowing into the right ground will change your life. It has changed my life. It will change your life. Money does not have to be a problem for us. And can I prophesy that money won't be a problem? Not in this house. In 2024, we will see money miracles. 2024, we will be great stewards. 2024, we will be money managers. I decree and I declare that God will trust you with more money. I decree and I declare that what you have, God will multiply what you have. God will take the little that you have and he will allow your vast, he will allow your barns to overflow. And I bind up every demon of discouragement, every demon of hopelessness, decree and I declare that your hands will make you more money than you've seen in the last five years. Lift up your hands and lift up your faith. I decree in Jesus' name that we will stop coming into the house of God thinking that money is bigger than the Lord but what's a little bit of money to a big God? He is everything that we need. The Bible said that he'll supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory can i prophesy over your checking account can i prophesy over your savings account can i prophesy over every person in this room that's been in the red can i prophesy you're coming out of the red you're coming out of the negative you're coming out of late fees you're coming out of things doubling in the name of jesus can i prophesy that your debt is disappearing in the name of Jesus. There's a grace coming. There's a grace coming. And I prophesy of the demon that keeps attacking your cars and attacking your transmissions and attacking your alternators. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that you're going to rebuke every devil that's after your cars, after your possessions, after it in the name of Jesus. Your cars will ride well. You will stop having to 
go to the mechanic lift up your faith in this room we will not bow to a spirit that comes after our finances we won't bow but we'll continue to prophesy greatness is on my finances greatness is on my life you won't be homeless you won't get evicted you gonna have money for your kids for Christmas you won't be
seed you sow today is going to speak for your negative accounts. Y'all know I don't get up here and do all that prophesying. And if you're a visitor or if you're a new member, the reason they're acting like this is because this is a house of money miracles. When the Lord starts speaking to me about the money of the saints, stuff starts happening up here. Bills start disappearing. You better not miss a Sunday because you need every prophetic word. You better not miss a Sunday because there is an atmosphere that's being ripened. Uh, that the recession is not going to affect this house. Uh, it may affect somebody else's house. Uh, but the recession uh, will not affect Dominion City Church. Uh, those who are planted uh, in the house of the Lord uh, shall flourish. Uh, everything connected to you will flourish in Jesus' name. I'm telling you what the Lord is saying. Get your seed out. And I decree that not another Sunday you're going to get sad when it's seed time. Next time you come to church, you might as well bring them negative accounts and put it on the altar. Take you a black sharpie and, and scratch out your name. The last time we put wallets and purses on the altar, people were getting $19,000 checks and $20,000 checks and they were going back to pay bills and people would tell them that we don't see your account up. Your account is zero, zero. We had a woman in this church who had a car repossessed. She went back to her credit report and the repossessed car was gone. You better know that we serve a card that will make uh, everything that's trying to make you weep, uh, he will make it disappear in the name of Jesus. The seed you sow today is going to speak for you in 2024. We give God the first of everything. Get that seed out and stand. Those of us who I've learned to put, one of the things I learned in finances, once you get your seat stand, one of the things I learned when I started studying finances, I came out of about $24,000, $25,000 of debt. I paid off in one year with a $32,000 income. True story, Apostle. Just our faith alone. Faith. And after I got out of debt, I started to uh, study money management. And one of the things they would teach you is don't put all your money in one account. You put them in multiple accounts. And so I, I apply this principle in the spiritual. And this is for those who, of you who are living in the season of overflow. If you are living in the season of overflow, I want to challenge. That means you have more than enough. You don't worry about bills. You don't worry about money. I want to challenge you that as you sow into church, this is what I've been doing. I've been put, making spiritual investments beyond just sowing in church. I've been sowing into single mothers. I've been sowing into people who can't give me anything back. Put your money in multiple places. Put your money in kingdom investments. If you are in a season of overflow, and even if you're not, buy a single mother say, I need to purchase a toy for one of your children. If you don't have children, make an investment because you know you want children and go find a single mother in the house of the Lord and say, I, I want to purchase a toy for your child. Ain't nobody going to give you no shout out on Facebook. <laughs> we ain't going to give you no shout out because we want to give from a pure heart. But I'm telling you, it works. It work. I work the principle for myself. It works. If you invest in where you want to go, if you invest in places that can't give you anything back, you will see a tremendous breakthroughs in your life. This is the wrong time to get tight-fisted. The wrong time. Hold those seeds in the air. Father, bless the seeds of your people. If you're giving by cash app, God, bless the seeds of your people. If you need somebody to give a seed, if you don't have any money at all, I will sow a seed for you. I will sow a seed for you. We will make sure that you get a seed that will speak for you. 
Father, bless the seeds. And may these seeds turn their weeping and their mourning into dancing. I decree it to be so in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. The cash up is hashtag DCCMS1. You can give by check. You can make those checks out to the Mingan City Church. Or you can give by cash. And you can bring that around. They're going to start from the rear. We ask that everybody come around so that no one has to step over you. If you are giving on your phone electronically, you also can text to give. All of that information is on the screen. You can text your amount to that number on the screen. And you can text to give. We want you to take that phone of yours. And we want you to tap that basket. Amen. And this is a sign of abundance. And this is a sign of you staying connected to the vine. Amen. You may start on the outer aisles from the last row and come around with joy and gladness bringing your seed unto the Lord. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. We're continuing on in worship. If you're viewing with us online, I encourage you to lift your hands in your living room, if you're in your kitchen, wherever you are. I want you to lift up your voices as we begin to lift up this song in worship to the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all, all you could ask or claim, According to the power that I work up in you, you, God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's caught up on me. Every promise to you Don't give up on God Cause he won't give up on you He's able Come on, do you believe that? Say he's able Thank you, Jesus Come on, help me sing Say God, God is able to do what He said. What He said He would do. He's gonna fulfill. He's gonna fulfill every promise to I wanna encourage you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Cause He won't give up on you. Come on, lift your voice and say. Jesus, we thank you that you're a man of your word. Hallelujah, God. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. We worship you in this place. Come on, one more time. Say, God is able. God is able to. Just what he said. Just what he said he would. Just what he promised. He's going to make good.
and tapped into his so God. I was in prayer this morning. The Lord said, tell the people it's going to be when they least expect it. I'm telling you, he said, it's going to be when you least expect it. 
It's going to come out of nowhere. You're going to be like, where did this come from? Where did this miracle come from? Where did this blessing come from? The Lord said, tell my people I'm going to do it when they least expect it. And he said, also tell them. He says, it's going to be in an unusual time and an unusual season. See, when Jesus came to Peter on the boat, he says, let down your net for a catch. And the Bible says, Peter says, Master, we've told all night. See, what Peter was saying is, I was in the water at the right time, nighttime, which is designed for fishing. But you're coming in the daytime telling me to let down my net for a catch. And Jesus is saying to many of us in this room, I'm going to give you an unusual miracle in an unusual time. Come on. It's going to be in a season where it don't make sense. It's going to be when you least expect it. If you believe that in this room, just take 25 seconds and fill this room with water. increase is not going to make sense that you have what you have in your possession it's not going to make sense that your income has tripled because God says I'm going to do it in, in an unusual time in an unusual season that's what faith makes happen so father we honor you in this place I thank you now father that we are open our faith is ignited I declare in Jesus' name, God, revive every person in this room that has weak or small faith. I declare that the faith in this room of each believer is going up on maximum. I declare that your faith to believe in the unexpected power of God will move in your life. I declare that you will not come a waver or you will not dwell or you will not settle your thoughts on seasons where things didn't go the way you expected it. But I declare in this season that your faith will make room for the promise. That your faith will make room for the elevation. That your faith will make room for the turnaround in the name of Jesus. So I declare your faith in God goes higher in this room. 
your faith in his unwavering hand goes higher to another level in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Lord, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise on the way to your seat. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen. God is faithful, and I promise you, I'm glad to be in the house. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord on this morning? Amen. I'm so happy to see each and every one of you. Amen. And we're excited about all that God is doing. I tell you, uh, this coming up, well, this coming up Saturday will be our couples night, uh, line dance, social. Amen. And so couples, come on. Amen. Don't act like that if you can't dance. Come on. Don't act like that. Amen. And don't act like that if you're still single. All right. All right. All right. I'm telling you, you just gotta keep believing God. Just because you're single now, don't mean you're gonna be single this time next year. All right, all right. And so uh, I want to see the couples. Can I count on the couples uh, to join us uh, this coming up Saturday? All right, for a time of uh, fellowship, fun, and impact. But I heard the, the ladies last night, y'all were outside, and I heard it was a powerful time. In the Lord. Amen. Okay, what I'm talking about, ladies. Amen. We thank God for our woman of God and her heart uh, to nurture, to pour, to push, to encourage, and to impart into the generation of daughters in this house. Can we celebrate our prophetess on this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for her. And I tell you, she was almost past her curfew last night. I was like, what they, so what they, what they doing out there? <laughs> Amen. But she got in on time. Praise the Lord. And uh, let's not forget real quick, a grief night is going to be on the 20th. That's not this coming up Wednesday. The next Wednesday, all right, we have a special guest coming in uh, that we're making the investment to pay for her to come because resources are not free. And uh, she's coming for all of those uh, who've been struggling this season with grief. Maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe you know someone close to you that's grieving. I want to see you in the place on the 20th of December. So not this coming on Wednesday. It's the next Wednesday for paint and talk. So come and paint and come and be poured into for all of those who are grieving. I want to see you. Can I count on you to be there? I promise you, we do not uh, just plan things just to be doing it for fun and waste your time. It will not be a waste of your time. I promise if you come, the Lord will minister to you. You will be strengthened this Christmas to be able to fight grief. Amen? Come on, how are you believing that? Y'all know that grief can become a holiday demon that comes to take your joy, comes to take your peace. But we're declaring that this year you will have the strength to fight back, all right? And so we want to help you do that on the 20th of December. I want to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's preaching time. All right? We've been in a series called Fortified. All right? And so we're just continually to plow as the Lord just continue to lead us into a stop. And so it's been a powerful, life-changing series. Uh, ever since the beginning of dealing with um, persecution with prophetess, and she preached a powerful word in, on Jezebel. We've been dealing with a the spirit of Ahab. We've been dealing with the gift of correction. And we're going to go a little deeper on this morning. Are y'all ready? Matthew, Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Amen. Once you have it, you can stand very briefly. Hallelujah for the word of God. Amen. Matthew 16, 13 to 20. If you have it, it will be on the screens. I'm going to read down to verse 19. The scripture says, When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, some others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But he said to him, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon of Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say also to you, unto you, you are Peter. 
And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades or hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Hallelujah. I want to come from a subject this morning. I just want you to help me preach. I want to talk about mislabeled. Mislabeled. I want to talk about mislabeled. I want to help us preach talking about mislabeled. If you're uh, off watching online, I want you, if you have your phones out, if you will, uh, just partner with us very briefly. Take time uh, to share to help get this message out. We're going to talk about mislabeled. Amen. And I want to come, can I enter a subtopic? Don't call my church a cult. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, let's work, let's work. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut, 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 Oh, it's on heaven's agenda. <laughs> And I've come as God's lieutenant to set order in this region. And we're going to deal with every lion demon that's in Greenwood, that's in Greenville, that's in Indianola, that's in Shaw, that's in Shelby, that's in Cottsdale. Don't call my church. Please be seated. I promise you, you'll be back up in a minute. Please be seated. Just give me 15 minutes to work. Uh, but I, I've been, hold on, bring me down just a little bit. I've been listening to this nonsense uh, for seven years. And the Lord has never released me on a Sunday to address it. But he said, Sunday, now is time. He said, son, now is time. I want you to go on that Sunday. And I want you to deal with that lying demon that's over your church that says you're caught. I want you to shut down every lying operation and deal with every warlock and witch and wizard in the region that's trying to paint your church out to be a cult. And when I get done today, it's going to be settled in the heavens who we really are. Please be seated. Please. Please be seated. I want to do some work. Please be seated. Give me about 15 minutes. Here. Give me about 15 minutes. Here I come. And so what we're dealing with, church, we're dealing with the, the, the dichotomy or uh, the revelation of labels. Labels are very important and labels are something that God places on your head even before you were born. And the Bible said, he told Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you and I've already ordained you. I labeled you to be a prophet to the nations. And so you must understand uh, that the importance of knowing that who God has called you to be and whose God called you to be, that many of you, you cannot fully interpret or internalize what God has said about you because all your life, you've heard the complete opposite of what you are not. Come on. Some of you have been called all kind of things. You've been called crazy. You've been called stupid. You've been called ugly. You've been called weak. You've 
been called pathetic. You've been called, come on, troublemaker. You've been called nothing. You've been called you will never grow. So there have been things announced over you that you will never make it, that you will never make enough money, that you will never be married, that you will never have children, that you will never be in your right mind, that you're going to be like your crazy auntie and your crazy grandmama. Come on. That you're going to be like all these other people. They said you're going to be just like your daddy. And you don't even know where your daddy had. You hadn't met him in years. You're going to be just like your mama. And your mama been in prison for stabbing somebody. You're going to be just like this person. And so you've been labeled all your life. But I've come to tell you that God says take every label that people in society and culture and family has placed on you and you begin to put the labels that God has placed on you. You begin to take on the labels that he said you're fearfully and wonderfully made. You begin to take on the label that he says you're blessed in the city and blessed in the here. Blessed when you come in and blessed when you come out. You begin to take on the labels. I'm a chosen generation. I wish I had a church. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people that should show forth the praises of him who's called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Some people put trauma, but put a labels on you based upon unresolved trauma. So because they have unresolved trauma, they begin to label you based upon that same disoriented experience. And so you will have these labels placed on you because of these unresolved trauma. And then some of you, your labels are based upon the experience that people have had in their own personal life. Listen, that may have been your experience with a certain individual, but just because that's your experience doesn't mean that that's my own experience. And I don't have to label them the same thing you label them because that's your personal experience. And how can I validate that your experience is truly authentic because you already are labeling people with an offended heart. And so how can you even adequately assess the thing when your heart is not even healthy and whole. Labels are very serious. And labels bring identity. Labels bring distinction. You go into the grocery store, it's very careful that you put the label on because you can easily get confused because certain products look just alike. Coke and Dr. Pepper look the same. And so the labels matter because I need you to make sure Coke is in my cup and not Dr. Pepper. I'm not throwing no shade at people who doctor, but Dr. Pepper tastes like medicine. I, I don't want that. I, I need to make sure the label, I'm from the, the la- don't, be, don't be offended at me. Don't try to help me. The label has to be right because I want to make sure I'm receiving what I'm expecting. And so labels help identify the quality of what's in the package. Many people are so sometimes engulfed with the label, but the label is just as important as what are you producing in the package? What are you placing on the inside? Because many of us, we hide between our exterior frame, and so we don't take enough time to invest on the inside to make sure the package is real on the inside so the label matches the package. So you just can't call yourself a wife because you can look the part on the outside, but on the inside, are you getting your heart together? On the inside, are you putting the work together to make sure the package matches the label? Just can't call yourself a man just because you claim to be a man. On the inside, are you praying and seeking the heart of the Father? On the inside, are you willing to turn down childish ways? On the inside, are you willing to learn who God is in his word? It works from the inside and then out. But many times with labels, we want the name, but we don't want the package. We don't want to develop the product. We don't want to build what's on the inside. Don't call yourself a leader or a man or a woman of God, but on the inside, come on, you hate people. On the inside, you're conniving. On the inside, you're easily offended. On the inside, you're jealous. On the inside, you allow people and you begin to dismiss other people's feelings. And so don't just give me a title. Don't just give me a label. But God, I want to work on the package. I want to make sure what's on the inside of me 
me is right. And so when people get invited to who I am, they meet God. They meet the Holy Ghost. They meet someone who has true power in the Lord. continue to work because you have to be careful what you label yourself as. Reason why is because some of you, even that's in relationships, you can't break free because you already got in your phone I'm Danny's wifey. That's what you label yourself as. And so when God is telling you now to release yourself, you can't release because you already made a covenant with the label you've already confessed. Come on, you ain't put no ring on it. We ain't married. Why am I calling myself your wifey? Why am I come on, getting your name tattooed on my body? Why am I making confessions that I will never leave you? You stuck with me forever. And I'm going to be with you to the day I die. The devil, if God hadn't ordained it, if God hadn't placed it on my life, if God hadn't stamped it in the heavens, I will not confess it. I will not get no t-shirt made with your picture on it because God has not ordained it in the heavens. And some of you can't break free because you have made these confessions and you have established these labels and you have these tattoos and you have these t-shirts that communicate something that God says I have not called you to be a prisoner of now if you got somebody named tattooed on you I'm not judging you God, God still can release you from that God can still free you from that. But I'm saying is we have to be careful announcing something before God has tried it. If it's not proven, I don't want to annou- give it an early announcement. If it's not proven, I don't want to make an announcement to the family. If it's not established, I don't want to make a declaration on social media. Uh, because whenever that thing is proven, then it's going to be r- the right time. It's going to present itself. I ain't got to announce uh, what God is doing in my life. Because once I pass the test, uh, once I've been proven, God will announce me to the world. God will announce me to people he wants to see the miracle working thing over my life. So I want to continue to work because I want to deal with labels. Many of you just have to be just honest yourself. You are not the mistake. Some of you have made some mistakes in your life. And you allow the mistake to cover up you fully to be what you're labeled as. So just because you fail a test doesn't mean you're a failure. But me, you labeled yourself as a failure all because you've made this one mistake. And people won't let you forget about your mistakes. It's amazing how they have amnesia with their own mistakes. It's amazing how you act like you ain't got nothing that's in your closet, but you quick to point out what's wrong in somebody else. I don't need you to remind me that I got mistakes. In fact, God went ahead and put them before me before I came out. And so I have no shame that that's where I've been. I have no shame that I used to struggle with drugs. I have no shame that alcohol used to be my portion. But when God delivered me, I told God, don't excuse from my story but included so people can see that your grace is real Oh God, I want to help some people out in this room. Uh, um, don't you remove from your story that you got pregnant out of wedlock. Don't you remove from your story that you was in an abusive relationship. Don't you remove from your story that you was in prison. Don't you remove from your story that you almost lost your mind. Don't you remove from your story that you stole and you've been in a bad place and depression almost had you and you got all these bodies on your name. But when God set you free, he did dismiss the charges from your past and he used it as fuel to launch you forward. Somebody shout, take it with you, take it with you. And so when I preach, I'm preached with the anointing and I preach through my experiences. You preach through your anointing and you preach that you survived cancer. You preach through your anointing and you preach that you survived divorce. You preach through your anointing and you preach that you survived sickness. You preach through your anointing and you preach that you survived heartbreak. Whatever you survived is the very power God is using to authorize you for your next season. So, 
So let's go work here. I want to deal with some stuff. I got to move on. Uh, because we're dealing with fortify cities in the Old Testament. They had large, tall, fortified walls. It was a military tactic. And so whenever people tried to shoot arrows into that particular location and city, they did not have easy access because that particular city was fortified. And the reason why we're preaching being fortified is because we know that the demons and devils and principalities don't like a church that's marked by God. And so he would try to use different arrows and marks to shoot and fire. But when there's a city or a church is fortified, nothing that the enemy can send can come against that church and so we see in this text and and, and Matthew chapter 16 13 I'm getting to the text Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi Philippi Caesarea Philippi is 25 miles north of the Sea of Galilee and he asked the disciples a key question he said who do men say that I am the son of man am now the reason why Jesus this is the only time we see him even taking time to address this because they are in a serious a moment in the ministry of Jesus. He's in a Caesarea Philippi at this location. This is the location. He says, I'm not going to take another step forward until I address the elephant in the room. Jesus said, I'm not going to ignore it. I mean, this is a serious moment for the vision of what God has for my life. And so this leader, this pastor, he says, before I take another step forward, God tell, to gives him the permission to set the record straight. And I'm here uh, this morning by the permission, commissioning of God. I'm here not from a carnal place. I'm here not from a the religious place. I'm here from a biblical place to help set the record straight. And so what Jesus does, because we see this as biblical, he wants to make sure that his church is fortified. He want to make sure they have the proper revelation of who he is. So he asked his disciples, the members of his congregation, the members of his church, he says, who do men say that I am? In other words, he gives clarity. Let me break it down for your term. He says, what the street committee is saying about me? I'm going to bring it even further for many of us in the room, make it relevant. I ain't going to hide around it. I ain't going to go around the bush. I'm going to go right through it. What do men say Dominion City is? And so the member, because see, this is the way that the church, his members of his church, he's dealing with the people. He, they said, what do men say to him? And in verse 14, so they say, some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah and some Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And, and so let's just go ahead and deal with it in the room. So what do men say Dominion City is? Some say we are cold. Oh, this is getting quiet in here. Some say we about money. Some say that prophet thinks she all that. Come on. Uh, some say we, we got all we, we you have to sign a contract to join a church. Name, raise your hand, you had to sign a contract to join a church. All right, that's what I thought. And so they say all this different stuff because he wanted to reveal what they were listening to when it comes to the street committee. Because you cannot have a strong group of people if they are confused by what liars are saying outside of the house. So who do you believe? So, it's in all this, you're a cult, you're this. You, they, 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 they say all this about the mean city. In verse 15, I'm going to get there. He says, but who do you say? He said, but who do you say that I am? This is what God is dealing with. He's saying, forget all what the street committee is saying. What you believe. What's in your heart? What are you listening to? Some of you, it's your family members that's doing the talking. I ain't getting no help. Some of you, it's your boyfriend doing the talking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some of you, it's your ex and your baby daddy and your baby mama doing the talking. Some of you, it's your co-workers doing the talking. But God said, who do you say that we are? Now, let me deal. Let me establish because many, the reason why Jesus had to establish it because as long as this is on the back of your head, and you're not fully engulfed into the vision of the house, or you don't have a revelation of what you are a part of or who you're submitting under, 
then when you get offended or when you get deceived, what they said is going to be more valid. And so you're going to believe what the street committee said instead of having a divine revelation of yourself or what God shows you what your church is about and what your leaders are about. And so what is a cult? Let's, let's go ahead and deal with the elephant room. What's a cult? I'm going to take a few minutes to deal with this. What's a cult? If we could be honest with half of us, don't even know what a cult is. What's a cult? Let's deal with it. Let's, let's deal with it. Let's work. Let's work. So a cult is, y'all ready? A cult is a group of people who are submitted under one man's misinterpretation of the Bible. So Jehovah Witnesses. Is, I'm giving you a clear indication. I'm telling you who the real cults are. Jeho I know your auntie is part of Jehovah Witness, but I'm coming to tell you, she's a part of a cult. Because cults are established off of one person's misinterpretation of the Bible. Charles T. Russell is the man who developed a watch time, a book that he made off of an argument that he had in church. And he made that book and he changed the doctrine or the origin of the Bible to get people confused. So that people can follow, watch this man-made religion and not God. Cults are people or groups of, who deem to be superiority. They're groups that have toxic leadership structures, controlling leadership structures. They have toxic and dogmatic doctrine that they teach. They, they teach you to push away outsiders. And so we'll get into it. So look at some of the, the, the qualities of a cult and how you know you're a part of a cult or you've been a part of a cult or what the definition of a real cult is. And we're going to check it off. How you know you are a part of a cult? Number one, the members are so scared to miss church. And not only, let me, I want you, I want y'all pay attention. I want you to lock in. Are we excited? I want you to lock in. But they, when they miss church, they got to ask for permission to miss. So in this church, you ain't got to ask for permission to miss church, or you can't even go visit another church. And at Dominion City, you can go visit another church even though you're a member here. But although you still should make sure that you place your commitment to where you belong. So a person that's truly committed to their church won't just bounce around everywhere else and then leave out the set place that God called them to be. But however, I want you to know that you can visit your, your family having family and friends day and they call you and say, oh, we want you to come and be a part of it. You can go and be a part of it at this church. You can actually go with your family and go visit another church. But when you're a part of a cult, if you miss, they come on, degrade you, they talk about you, they down you, they track you down, they talk about you behind your back. So and so weren't there. Here's another a, 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 a point that leads with those who are part of cults. You can't associate with nobody who leave the church. And this is strong. I'm telling you, I've seen it firsthand. And I know many people that deal with it. And it's strong in this region to where if you join a church, you got to move the city to leave it. So sad that we're in times where these leaders, insecure leaders, have to lock you down. They only got 15 people and they don't want the, the 15 to leave. And so they got to lock you down to stay so you can help come on, minister to their insecurity. And just as God has permitted you to join a church, he can also permit you to leave a church. But when you're a part of cults, they control you and they tell you you can't go nowhere. And then you go somewhere, they ostracize you and tell everybody in that church, don't say a word to them. That is a cult. That is witchcraft leadership. People have the right to leave. And God showed me a long time ago, just as people come and you welcome them, bless them when they leave. 
when it's their time to go, when it's their time to transition, bless them. And that's what I always do. I bless them. I appreciate people for valuing the time, for committing to song, whatever the case may be. And even those that don't leave good on good terms, I still bless them. I still pray for them. And we've had people to leave not on good terms and still come back. And guess what? I still bless them and welcome them. Why? Because this is not my house. This is God's house. So in this church, We'll never tell you don't connect with somebody because they left. But I also advise you to be careful not to let people who leave sow seeds of discord to, to try to influence you to leave because they mad because they left. So I said, look, you left. I'm like, That's your decision, but this is my church, and God ain't asked me to leave nowhere. This is where I'm growing. This is where my marriage got restored. This is where I get my deliverance. This is where the prophetic is strong in my life. And just because you left don't mean I got to leave. In fact, our conversations don't even need to include the million city. Let's talk about the mall. Let's talk about shopping in South Haven. We can talk about the kids, but don't even mention my church. In the cult, people are taught what to think, not how to think. Here in the church, we teach you how to think. We teach you how to make decisions. We teach you how to raise your family. We don't teach you what to think. But in most cult teaching, they only teach you what to think. They're very doctrinally extreme. They tell you things like, if you get baptized, when you get baptized in Jesus' name, if you don't come up speaking in tongues, you're going to hell. Show me that in the Bible. It's being just so extreme. Speaking in the Holy Ghost is important, but to deem people to go to hell, when God is prescribed in the word, what gets us there is our confession in our heart. That's what gives us the right to get to heaven, not by doing what we're being dipped in water, even though it's important to be baptized. I'm saying is it's not a license to send people to hell. Nowhere in scripture does it show that. Another thing in dealing with coke, y'all good? Yeah. Now, because what happens is the leaders cannot necessarily model it, but the members can model it. And so we got to be careful making statements like, we got the best church. Ain't no church better than our church. We the best, nobody got the glory like we got the glory. See, how you want to know people are, are, are under a coke it's all about being the best. It's a competition environment. The people are trying to target different churches and compete with them. Who got the most followers? Who doing the most in the city? Who doing the most in the region? That's a cult. Dominion City, you would never hear me say, and I don't want any member of the church saying things like, we the best church. We're not in competition. We're not trying to be the best. Nobody like my prophets. I understand you're biased, but we want to be understanding that God has multiple gifts, multiple churches. Our church is not the only church God is using. He's using multiple churches. All churches are not bad. And so we don't want to have the mentality, we the best church. When you, we start talking like that, we are talking cult talk. Other churches, we partner with them. My mindset is a partnership mentality. We partner with the church. We collaborate with the churches. Other churches are not my enemy. And other churches should not be your enemy. Another thing I want us to understand about this is uh, you know you're a part of a cult is this right here. Um, you're in a, a cult where <clears throat> you have to um, dress a certain way. It's required. You have to, everybody has to dress a certain way. The, the, the women in the church have to dress a certain way, have to look a certain way. This is how you know you are part of a cult culture. Uh, because in the Bible, God says, I don't look at the outer appearance. I look at the heart. So with the requirement that God requires for assessment, for judgment, all that is dealing with the heart. God looking at the heart. He's not looking at the outer appearance. And so when we put uh, dress codes in the church and say that everybody has to dress a certain way to be fit, deemed to be holy or used in that ministry, you are, have been or that is a determined knowledge of understanding that that is a cult. 
Now, I want us to understand that that doesn't mean that people wear skirts that they're in wrong standing. Whether you wear long skirts, whether you wear pants, whether you wear makeup, whether you don't wear makeup, whether you wear hats, whether you don't, whatever it is, but that doesn't mean that because they wear a certain style of clothing that they're in wrong standing. It simply means when that church makes it pretty much a law that everybody has to dress this way, look this way, and if you don't look that way, you're deemed unacceptable for God. That is cult. You're forced to give. Forced to give. In this church, we don't force anyone to give. You have the right to give. You you choose to give. Also in cult churches, and they're moving on, you have to go to the leader first to get direction. You can't go to God for yourself. It's here at Dominion City. We teach you, go to God for yourself. All right? But in certain cult churches, the leaders want you to come to them, and then they tell you what to do. But here at Dominion City, you would never have to come to us first. Your priority is to go to God and seek God for direction and answer. And when you come to us, one thing with me and prophets, we don't, we don't tell people what to do. We offer biblical suggestions or we tell you things that you ought to uh, look at from a different perspective. But we, will never, we never tell people what to do. Never. People come to me for advice about buying houses, parenting, marriage, whatever it is. I give them biblical suggestions. This is what you want us to think about. This is what you want to consider. But at the end of the day, I want you to make a wise decision. And then someone will say, well, Apostle, what would you do? And they say, well, what would you do? (laughs) Well, this is what I would do. But I'm not telling you what to do. I'm giving you a suggestion. But in most church cultures, they will tell you you have to come to them before you go to God. We would never do that here in this church. Got to get confirmation from them. All of these different types of genre and things going on. None of that exists in this church. None of that is established here. So to, to, this is to lock in into our hearts to help us to see that we are not a cult. But there are ministries that are around us and there are groups that are truly cults because everybody has to prophesy a certain way. Come on, yeah. And if you don't prophesy in a certain way, then you can't be called or even be trained to be a prophet. Uh, some of these churches, the leaders let the praise and worship team live in sin. Come on. And everybody on the praise and worship team is, come on, at come on, different parties twerking and dancing and up on Sundays worshiping, but the pastor or the leader won't address that because they want to use your gift while they, come on, let your soul go to hell. But when you are a part of a healthy church, we're not going to let you just do whatever you want to do in the church and your soul is on the way to hell. We're going to help your soul get saved before you walk into your gift. Be careful being a part of churches that you can live openly in sin but never be addressed, never be confronted, never be asked, huh, what's going on with your life? We notice there's some changes, but you don't mind doing anything. They don't mind you. Come on, singing on a praise and worship team. They don't mind you preaching. They don't mind you prophesying, but yet you can be drunk all the time. You can be outside of your mind, and they do not deal with your flesh or your soul. That's what a cult is. Cult churches, they turn people against each other. So and so don't come to church like they used to, where they, I'm going to turn uh, the rest of the people in the church against that one person. Tell the leaders, don't speak to sister so and so when she comes into the church. Uh, since she made me mad, she don't want to listen to me. That is cult talk. Uh, because in a real church, you don't turn people against each other. You don't come on promote certain people in out of a place to make other people jealous. Uh, you don't operate in witchcraft just to get control and belittle people. That is a demonic system. But I'm so glad here doing in city. Uh, we don't uh, do that. We don't apply that. Uh, this is a healthy church. Uh, we are unified by 
body of believers and we don't turn people against each other your sister is your sister your brother is your brother and when it's time to do kingdom we do kingdom and we do not fight each other for positions we do not fight each other for the pastor's attention we do not fight each other to gain notoriety we follow God Back in the text, uh, back in the text, the Bible says uh, that, he, that they had all these what the street committee said. But he said to them, who do you say that I am? First 16 says, Simon Peter, one person out of 12 people. The pastor asked 12 of them, who do you say that I am? 11 couldn't say anything. Only one person said, you are Christ or something. That was Peter. Peter was not like the other members. He walked by revelation. Revelation. Oh, this is very important. Revelation. You got to know someone by revelation, not just information, not just by experience. You want to know someone or circumstance by revelation. Do you know your spouse by revelation? If you don't know your spouse by revelation, the enemy will try to deceive you when your spouse is in a bad place. Let's say they, they fall into a place of depression. And so the enemy would tell you, well, this, this, no, he ain't no, meant to be your husband now because he fallen into a bad place. But when you know the revelation of who God has called your spouse to be, you won't give up on your spouse too quickly. You will be your spouse's biggest intercessor because God has shown you a revelation of who they really are in the realm of the spirit. Come on, I have a revelation of who Jesus is. It's not enough to just have information about Jesus. Do you have a revelation of who Jesus is? Because when times get hard in your life, when, when the world turns upside down, when things happen, calamity comes against you, if you just know Jesus by information, you're going to leave Christianity. If you just know Jesus by information, you won't stay with Jesus long. But when you have a revelation of who Jesus is, it don't matter how hard your life gets. It don't matter who walk out of your life. It don't matter what the world brings against you. You will not leave Jesus because I follow him by revelation. I know who he is. I know what he's capable of doing. But some of us, we only follow Christianity by information alone. The preacher may preach to introduce you. The word may introduce you to Jesus. But then you got to establish a revelation of who he is. Do you have a revelation of who Jesus is? If not, the world will give you misinformation to deceive you. And other cult faiths, they will try to deceive you as well because other cult faiths or other cult religions, they believe in Jesus, but they don't have the accurate interpretation of who Jesus is. So they give misinformation. They mislabel Christ. And a lot of these religions, it's not really even valid because if the religion is only valid because one person had a mystical encounter but no one was there to verify it, in a Muslim or Islam faith, you will see that the, 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 uh, the prophet Muhammad, he claims to have an encounter with the angel Gabriel, and he brings him the Quran, and he has this mystical encounter, but no one was there to verify it. No one was there to witness it. No one was there to verify it. But everything when it comes to Christianity, there were eyewitnesses that saw Jesus go into the tomb. There was eyewitnesses that saw the empty tomb. There were eyewitnesses that saw the true reality of our faith. But most religions don't even have eyewitnesses. They just give you a one-person account. And the Bible said, don't believe anything that doesn't have two or three witnesses. So most of the religions that are cultists, they only tell you things by self-proclamation. There is nobody there to verify that I was there, I saw it. But in Christianity, eyewitnesses were there to say, I saw the empty tomb. This gives us the strength the places that are mentioned in the Bible, they are still evident today. The artifacts of what was carried on the ship, they're still in, in museums because of what we serve is true. What we serve is real. What we serve is strong. We serve the true God. We serve the truth. And we don't serve a mystical experience. We don't serve what another man heard about. But we serve something that's already been established in the earth. We serve something that is already verified by truth. Verified by witness. Verified by evidence. 
because of the empty tomb we have hope because of the empty tomb we know that when we die that when the time comes where God needs to raise us up he will raise us up when the horn blows so he asks this is my last part he asked him he says who do you say one person had a revelation of who their leader was one person spent time in prayer about their leader. So when they were in prayer about their leader, God revealed the heart of their leader to him. This is why you pray for the person that's leading you. Because when you pray for them, God will reveal what kind of heart your leader has to you. So you don't have to be confused about who your leader is because when I prayed for my pastor, the Lord showed me by revelation who my pastor really is. The Lord showed me by revelation. So whenever the enemy tries to come against that place, you won't be deceived because I got a revelation of who my man and woman of God is. I don't move by, I move by revelation. I'm not moved just by what we see on social media with the growth and the numbers. I have a revelation of who my prophet is. I have a revelation of who my apostle is. And because I have a revelation, I can't be deceived. When people try to plant things to you, you, hold up, that don't even sound like my apostle. When people try to bring things to plant to you, they begin to, or, or what conversations in group chats. Texting to you about your woman of God, about your prophet, you're gonna be like, I, I know who my prophet is. They don't even sound, that's not my prophet, that's a false accusation. I know who my prophet, why? Because I know my prophet by revelation. But when you just go by information, you can easily be the seed, and people can plant seeds that will reap a harvest to get you out of, out of content or out of submission to the person who's called to help you grow. And Peter had a revelation, he knew who he was walking beside. He knew who he was standing. He knew uh, who he was with. It's sad to say all these members that saw the miracles Jesus did, that saw him open blind eyes, that saw him raise Lazarus from the dead, when Jesus asked, do you know who I am? They couldn't even give him an answer because it's possible to walk with somebody, to sleep beside somebody, to be married to somebody, and don't know who they are. And when you get the revelation of who you are walking beside of, nothing will be able to detour you from being able to be faithful to that ministry. When you get a revelation of what Dominion City is, because many of us don't have a revelation because we're too busy being clouded out by what the street committee is saying. When you know that this is truly a place where revival takes place. When you know this is truly a place where bodies get healed. When you know this is truly a place that's called to bring true change in this region. When you know that this is a place that is set up by God to be a place that will bring forth souls and help people get saved and bring the harvest. And when you have a revelation of that, you won't have a hard time serving. See, when you don't serve the church you go to, it's because you don't have a revelation of the church you go to. When you have a revelation of the vision of the house, you don't mind giving. Because in cult churches, the leaders demand you to give, but you never see where your money is going. And many of you, you want to know where your money is going, just go ahead and wipe your eyes and take a look where you are now. nothing but smell like money in his room huh? the carpet costs money the wall costs money the walls cost money the lobby costs money everything in here costs money because when you have integral leaders when you give them money watch what they will turn your money to most people when you honor these leaders you give them your money and all you see them do is buy new clothes but when you give a true leader some money, watch him build a building. Watch him, come on, build a youth center. Watch him build a school. Watch him build a place where people can get healed. Watch him build a rehab center. Watch him build a community center. I'm almost, I'm almost done. So the Bible says in verse 17, he said to them, Blessed you, Simon John, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in flesh and blood, God revealed this revelation to Peter who he was serving under. And he said, then you are Peter, because once you have the revelation of who Jesus is, the correct revelation, then he can reveal to you the revelation of who you are. 
He says, then you are Peter. He says, you, you, tell, you got me right? You got me right. I'm going to tell you who you are. You don't find yourself until you find Jesus. Not and watch this, not an alternate version of Jesus. When you truly find Jesus for yourself, this is how you find out who you are. He says, you are Peter. And then watch what he says. He says, on this rock, I will build my church. See, Jesus is a builder. And because Jesus is a builder, when you come into correct revelation of who he is, the anointed to build just comes on you. Oh, I prophesy in this room that this is going to, um, I'm telling you, 2024 will be a year of building. <laughs> oh, God, going, as the woman of God has already said, a prophet of God already said, your hands going to be busy. Oh, you're going to be building. <laughs> I ain't going to have time to gossip because I'm going to be building. <laughs> I ain't going to have time to be on the phone. I'm going to be building. <laughs> I ain't got time to scroll my timeline. I'm building. <laughs> I ain't got time to show up and gossip with you. I am building. I ain't got time to be in the group chat because I am building. I declare the builders will arise and you will build the kingdom. You will build your finances. You will build your book. You will build your business. You will build your company. You will build your family. You will build your children. You will build your calling. You will build your children. You will build Touch your neighbor and say, I'm going to build, I'm going to build, I'm going to build, I'm going to build. Put it in my hands and watch me build it. Put it in my hands and watch me construct it. I come to tell you, watch the million city build more locations. Watch we build a new building. Watch we build a new level for our kids to go. Watch us be- And he says the gates of Hades, hell, should not prevail against. This is what I want to tell you. This is why many people are confused uh, because at this point, the gates of hell should not prevail against it. I want to help you out <laughs> because many people thought <laughs> after all the lies and the attacks <laughs> and all those, come on, we occult this and occult that, and they thought the church will not be standing. <laughs> but I come to tell you, the gates of hell <laughs> should not prevail against when it's built on Jesus. Let me work it. See, when it's built on just carnality or flesh, when hell comes at it, it's going to fall apart. But when you build it on the rock, which is Jesus, when demons in hell try to come against it, it can't fall. Why? The gates of hell will not prevail because it's founded upon the rock. This is proof. This is why we needed that level of persecution. This is proof that this ministry is not built on myself or Prophet Ashley Brown. Because if this ministry was built on the two of us, it would have easily fell apart. But this ministry is built on the rock. It's built on Jesus. And as long as it stays built on Jesus, nothing in hell can be able to come and stop it. Nothing can knock it down. No lie from no witch. No lie from no warlock. No lie from no false prophet. No lie from no devil in hell can come against what God has placed on the rock. All right, I'm getting ready to get out of here. Verse 19. Here's this. My last verse. I'm getting out of here. He says, I will give you keys to the kingdom of heaven. The Lord told me in 2024, this is incongruence to what you were saying. He said, 2024, tell this house will have three things. He says, it's going to be marriages. Have the room, mister. He said, I'm going to be doing some weddings next year. I'm, I'm already excited about that. He says, and we're doing some weddings. He says, tell the church, 2024 going to be marriages, keys, and deeds. He said, tell them, when I say I give them the keys to the kingdom of heaven, not just spiritual keys, but I'm about to give them keys to properties. I'm about to give them keys to houses. I'm about to give them keys to property and property and positions. I'm about to hand them keys. Yeah. So get ready. Get ready to be in city. He said, I want you to understand today. 
that you're going to have kings <laughs> and deeds. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Help me close here. <laughs> but I want you <laughs> to understand today <laughs> that the blessings <laughs> of the Lord <laughs> make them rich <laughs> and ants. <laughs> No sorrow <laughs> to it. <laughs> the Lord said <laughs> to tell Dominion City <laughs> that you're going to be blessed <laughs> in the city. <laughs> blessed <laughs> in the field. <laughs> blessed <laughs> when you go in. <laughs> blessed <laughs> when you come out <laughs> on the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. And this is my time. This is my season. And 2024, I take off every label, every label of insanity, every label of depression, every label of anger, every label of lust. I wish I had a church in here. I wish I had a church that will take on the label of generational curses, the label of cancer, the label of poverty, the label of migraines, the label of divorce, the label of the wretched is coming off of you. If you believe that, open up your mouth and shout yes. Shout yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I want to read that. Oh, help me close this. <laughs> I'm so glad <laughs> that the Lord <laughs> has dominion city in his hands and we can say Lord we thank you for keeping us but you're not done and you're not finished we welcome more souls we welcome more miracles we welcome more breakthroughs we welcome more harvests, we welcome more children, we welcome more families. Do me a favor and grab your neighbor by the hand and help me plow in this atmosphere. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't call my church a cult. Look at your other neighbor. And say, neighbor, you gotta say with emphasis, neighbor, don't call my church a cult. This is not a cult, but this is covenant. And because it's covenant, we serve, we submit, we sow, we prophesy, we cast out devils. We lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So, yeah, and God, He will turn it around for you. If you believe that, open up your mouth and shout, yeah. yeah. Oh. So we thank God that on one Friday night, he was beaten and bruised. He took pain after pain. He took scar after scar. He took stripe after stripe. And the Bible says they had to pick up his own cross and take it to a hill called Calvary. And they sit him on the hill. They nailed him into the cross, and on that cross, he told God, 
Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them that call us a cult. Because if they knew who we were, they will keep their mouth shut. Oh, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he sit there, he hung his head and said it is finished. And he died on the cross and they put him in Joseph's tomb. And he stayed there all night Friday night. He stayed there all Saturday morning. He stayed there all Saturday night. But I need about five people that will help me preach and lift up your hands and shout early, early, early. Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. And if he got up, you ought to testify. I'm getting up too. I'm going to the other side. I'm crossing over to rivers of living water. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I'm walking in signs. I'm walking in wonders. I'm walking into, oh, I wish some people would take some steps. I'm walking in promotion. I'm walking in deliverance. I'm walking in authority. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in breakthrough. I'm walking in promise. I'm walking in promotion. If you're walking into it, open up your mouth and shout. Listen, we shut down every indictment and false prophecy over this house that says that we are a cult, that says that we are false, that says that we are not authentic, and we stand ten toes down. That in 2024, we're getting ready to turn this region upside down. Come on, we're getting ready to turn this region upside down. If you believe it, make some noise in this room. Walking in power. On, we're, live, we're walking in down. power. We're walking in power. We're walking in power. We're walking in more. power. Walk. We're walking in power. We're walking in power. We're walking in power. We're walking in power. We're walking in miracles. 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 As you walk around this building, we're walking in miracles. 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 We're wal
in overflow. We're walking in overflow. We're walking in overflow. We're walking in overflow. We're walking. We're walking. We're walking. right here we walk in authority we're walking in authority we're walking in we're walking in authority we're walking in authority we're walking in authority we're walking in authority and right, I give God a praise come on keep watching come on keep watching we're walking we're walking we're walking we're walking in favor. 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 Every wall is coming down. Every step you take, we prophesy that every wall of Jericho is coming down. We prophesy the walls of religion in this region uh, is coming down. We prophesy that the walls of contention uh, and the walls of strife uh, is coming we're down walking. in the name of Jesus. We're walking. We're walking. Oh, walk it out. We're walking. Come on and walk, walk it out. We're walking. Come on and walk it out. Hey. Walk it. Come on and walk it out. We're walking. Come on and walk it out. Of a good man, we're walking. It's all about the Lord. We're walking. The steps of a good man, we're walking. All about the Lord. We're walking. The steps of a good man, we're walking. All about the Lord. We're walking. The steps of a good man, we're walking. All about the Lord. We're walking. The steps of a good man, we're walking. All about the Lord. We're walking. The steps of a good man, we're walking. We're walking. The steps of a good man, we're walking. All about the Lord. We're walking. We shall tread upon the snake. We shall tread upon the snake. We're walking. We shall tread upon the snake. We're walking. We shall tread upon. One more time and give God a praise right there. Come on, come on, come on. It's under your feet. It's under your feet. Come on, you're walking on top of it in this season. And it's under your feet. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah in this place. Glory to God. Come on. 
So we declare in this room, as we lift up our hands, we declare in this room, as we surrender to the Lord in this moment, Father, uh, we thank you for what was released in this place. Thank you for your hand and your power that's in this room. Father, we come into agreement with what you're doing in this room. And so we just ask you now, Father, to cover us. We thank you every label that's been placed on us that's not of you. We declare that you're tearing down those labels now. We're going to lay hands on your head right now. As you lay hands on your head, this is symbolic to every label that has been stamped on the top of your head in this room. By the fire of God, we declare in Jesus' name that he's tearing down every label. We declare now you will not walk into that identity. We break the personality that's tied to that label. We break now every identity crisis that's connected to that label in the name of Jesus. The label of insecurity, come on. The label of jealousy, come on. The label of envy, come on. We declare the label of depression and pride and heaviness. We declare the labels that's been placed over your head as it relates to being inferior, as it relates to having lack of confidence. We declare in Jesus' name, by the power of God, every label, in the name of Jesus, may it be broken. In the name of Jesus, we call fire down to every aisle. Come on. We call fire down to every chair. And we declare by the fire of God, in the name of Jesus, every label, may it be broken in the name of Jesus. Every stronghold. Come on, pray. We're almost there. Every stronghold. Everything that's in agreement to your future, we break it now. And we declare every label, every label in the name of Jesus, every label. Everything is attacking your mind. Every false accusation. We declare in this atmosphere, let it be broken. In the name of Jesus. Everything that's connected to mistakes that you made. Everything that's connected to your past. We declare in Jesus' name, may it break now. May it break off of your identity. May it break off of your mind. Come on, pray. May it break off of your emotions. May it break now in the name of Jesus. For in the name of Jesus, I declare every label. May it come off now. Come on, we do now in the realm of the spirit. We strip every label now. We tear it down off of your bloodline. We tear it down off of your family. We tear it down off of your marriage in the name of Jesus. You are not going to lose your mind. You are not going to lose your focus. You are not going to lose your health. You are not going to lose your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare in Jesus' name by the fire of God. Every false label, every false accusation. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, as your hands are laid upon your head, it's breaking off of you now. Come on, it's breaking off of your bloodline. It's breaking off of your mind. It's breaking off of your emotions. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the name of Jesus. Woo-hoo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Hallelujah. So you're here today. You're here in this place and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. You all may be seated real quickly. You've not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want you all to invest the time in praying with me right now. If you are here in this room, there is no shame or embarrassment, but you're here, you're saying, I know I need a Savior. I know I need to accept Christ, who's the chief cornerstone of my soul. And I want to give my life to Jesus on today. I want to surrender my life to the Lord. And I'm ready to give my life to Jesus to be saved. If that is you, you want ready to give your life to the Lord, I want you to just stand where you are. No embarrassment, no shade. Just stand where you are. If you're ready to give your life to the Lord of today, anybody in this room, 
Come on, there's one right there. Come on. Oh, y'all can do better than that. You ought to get that towel and wave it in the room. If you think God that God is still saving souls. Come on, there's one. Hallelujah. Glory be unto God. Come on, one soul. Whenever one gives their life, the Bible says the heaven rejoices when one. I had a church that would help me. He is here. Come on, I wish I had. What my praise and worship till you leave me hanging? He is here. That's it. He is risen. He has risen from the dead. He is here. Come, come lay down. Come lay down. The word is you have carried. That's it. Cause he Sanctuary. One more time from the top. He is here. Come on, lift it up. Say, He is, he is here. I wish I had a church that believed it. He, he is here. Come on, He is risen. He has risen from the dead. He is here. So come lay down. any more you may come up and try if you have any more that want to give their life to Jesus on today hallelujah all you do is stand where you are if you're saying that this is a day that I want to submit my life to Jesus amen if you have any area in your life where you need your soul to be regenerated born again the Lord is here to help you to become born again hallelujah amen glory to God is there any more that want to say that I'm ready to Answer the call. I have a revelation of who Jesus is. And I'm ready to give my life to the Lord. That's you. Stand where you are. I'm going to take another 20 seconds. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. I'm ready to submit my life to Jesus. I'm not wrestling with it. I'm not fighting with it. I know he's real. I know I have a revelation of who Jesus is. And I'm ready to surrender my life to him. Hallelujah. Amen. When you have accepted Christ, you say, I need a place to grow, a church home, a family, a community where I can grow in the calling of God. And you're saying that I believe this is a place where I'm called to become a member of the Minion City Church. This is not a cult. This is a place where it cultivates gifts and cultivates assignments. And you're saying this is where you want to partner and become a part of the Minion City Church. That's you. Just stand where you are. You want to be a member. I want to be a member of Dominion City Church. This is where I want to call my church home. This is where I want to grow. This is where I'm believing God to build me and encourage and strengthen my family. That's you. Stand where you are. If you want to be a member of Dominion City Church, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I see we don't have any, but we have one that's insane. They give her life to Christ. Awesome. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so uh, we welcome you to the kingdom of God. If you have accepted Christ into your heart, I just want to say that uh, the Lord sees you. He hears you. And you're here by divine purpose and providence. And the Lord is saying that as you submit it to him, he's about to make those crooked paths straight. And he's really about to reveal to you in a greater dynamic who you are and who you're called to be. You've been searching for who you are. But the Lord says, now that you have answered it to the call to receive me, he says, you're going to have much, much great clarity of who you are and what your future will behold. All right? And so we welcome you to the kingdom of God. We welcome you to our family. Amen. Come on, we celebrate there. Come on, it takes courage to receive Jesus. And so... 
Uh, why don't you uh, say we want to get you uh, baptized, and then we'll walk you through a discipleship process uh, so that you can stay committed on your journey to being saved. Amen? And so we appreciate you again. Can we celebrate her one more time as we release her? Amen. To, they'll, they'll take your information. We'll prepare uh, to baptize you. Amen. Into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, give me your Jesus praise one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're standing uh, on our feet as we prepare to dismiss. Glory to God. Father, in Jesus' name, uh, we honor you and we thank you, Lord, for uh, just covering us and keeping us. We thank you, Lord, for your hand of protection that is on our church. And we thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We thank you, Father, that will we have a revelation of who we are and who we are called to be in our church, Dominion City Church, God. We thank you, Lord, for planting this church, this ministry that you are building uh, through submitted and committed believers. And so, Father, we thank you now that, Lord, we are covered and protected and safe. And we thank you that you are preserving us and keeping us to the coming of Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen.